welcome and thank you for joining me. I'm Jerry Oginski, a New York medical malpractice and personal injury trial lawyer practicing law here in the state of New York. Today's topic is a continuation in a series of videos on how lawsuits work. And we're now going to continue as to what happens after the lawsuit has been started and the attorneys for the doctor and the hospital have now served their answer on your attorney. What will happen is that together with the answer, they will serve documents requesting a detailed itemized listing and allegations against the doctor and hospital. That's known as a demand for a bill of particulars. And what your attorney will do is he will serve a response known as a bill of particulars, specifically detailing all of the allegations against the doctors and hospitals so that the lawyers for the doctors and hospitals will know exactly what your claim is and why. Whether it's a failure to diagnose cancer, whether it's a uh, improperly performed surgery, whatever the claim is, your attorney must now use that bill of particulars to explain in detail what exactly the problem is and what specific injuries you have suffered as a result of the wrongdoing. Only after your attorney has served that particular document, once a bill of particulars has been prepared and served on the lawyers for the doctor or the hospital, then the attorney can file a document known as a notice of medical malpractice action. That is an indication to the court that the parties are ready to come in for a scheduling conference, known as a preliminary conference. And depending upon which county your lawsuit is taking place in, it may take a few months for your attorney to, attorney to get notified to come in for a scheduling conference. You don't have to appear, your attorney has to appear, as well as the attorneys representing the doctor and the hospital. So on the date that your attorney goes in for a scheduling conference, dates will be set by the court as to when documents have to be exchanged and when depositions will take place. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term depositions, it basically means a question and answer session that you have to provide in your attorney's office and it's sworn testimony. And a court reporter is present to take down your questions and answers, as well as the same for the doctors and hospitals that you have sued. So that's important to put down in the uh, scheduling order so that we know when these things will take place. And your attorney will usually notify you when that occurs. And after the conference is held, the attorney will tell you when your deposition is scheduled to take place. Now, a lot goes on before your deposition will go forward. Many times clients will call an attorney wondering what's going on after the lawsuit has happened. Well, oftentimes the attorney does not let the client know all the behind the scenes work that goes on leading up to the deposition and there's a lot of paperwork that has to be exchanged. Most importantly, the attorney must provide the lawyers for the doctors or hospital what's known as authorizations, which are permission slips that will allow the lawyers to get copies of all of your medical records. In addition, your lawyer will also have to provide copies of medical records that he has already obtained to the lawyers for the doctors and the hospital. And this allows the attorneys the opportunity to review the records to see for themselves what went on in your case. And oftentimes, since they don't rely on a plaintiff's attorney, which means an attorney representing an injured victim, to provide them with accurate records, they will then go out and take your permission slips and get your records directly from the doctor or the hospital themselves. Now, if you remember in one of my other video tips, when we went through how your attorney evaluates your case, we talked about the length of time it takes to get your own medical records. Well, now it's going to take the lawyers for the doctors and the hospital the same length of time, if not longer, to obtain all of your records because first they must wait for the permission slips from you, then they have to process the paperwork, put cover letters with each one, and then send them out to the doctors and the hospitals requesting your records. Typically, what will happen is the doctors will send what's called a fee letter. They'll send a letter back to the lawyer or the law firm saying, we'll be happy to provide copies of these records to you, provided you pay us X dollars for copying costs. So now the attorney and the law firm must write a check to the doctor's office. They will send the check to the doctor, and now additional time will go by before the records are actually forwarded and furnished to the attorney. Once all of those steps have been completed and the attorney for the doctor or hospital has all of your medical records, then we can go forward with your deposition. Sometimes 
the scheduling of the deposition has to be put off or adjourned to allow the attorney for the doctor or hospital to get all of the records. And that's it for today's topic on setting up a discovery schedule with the court. And I want to thank you for joining me on this continuing topic on how lawsuits in New York work. I hope you'll join me for the next video tip, which is what happens when you come up for your deposition. What is it? How does it work? What does it mean? I'm Jerry Oginski. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.